عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Dear Muslims, last week my khutbah was about the reality of how siyam and fasting helps us attain taqwa. When Allah says in the Quran, O you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you so that you may achieve taqwa. How does fasting help us achieve taqwa or God consciousness? And last week I went over a number of points of them is sincerity, ikhlas. Because what fasting does is it causes you to purify your intention. What fasting does, it causes you to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watching you. Of them is that fasting also helps us with the concept of sabr, of patience, of restraint. Of them is that fasting helps us to better our akhlaq and interactions with other people. Today we're going to continue from where I left off last week. How does fasting help us achieve the ultimate goal of taqwa? And we'll mention a few points today. Of the ways that fasting allows us to attain taqwa is that the essence of taqwa, the essence of God consciousness is to control one's nafs, to control one's desires for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
This is what taqwa is. Because when you are faced with two choices, the one of which your nafs, your soul wants, and the other which is pleasing to Allah, taqwa necessitates you control your own nafs and you do what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, via the fast, via controlling our daily routine, we are demonstrating we have the power by Allah's help to control our nafs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly reminds us in the Quran to control our ego, to control our nafs. Allah says, Ya Dawudu, inna ja'annaka khalifatan fil ardi, fahkum bayna nasi bil haqqi wa la tattabi il hawa. O Dawood, we have appointed you to be a ruler amongst people, and so judge by what Allah has revealed, and do not follow your own desires. If you follow your own desires, فَيُضِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ It will misguide you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The famous Khalifa Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said, the muttaqi is like a man who has been tied up the muttaqi is not able to do what his desires want him to do. That's how he defined the muttaqi. The muttaqi is like somebody who's tied up. Tied up with what? With controlling his desires. And so you cannot achieve taqwa without controlling desires. And what the siyam does, it allows you to master the controlling of the desires. When we fast, we not only control the haram, we control the halal as well. What power on earth could possibly cause you to give up your food and drink? To not drink cold water in this heat of Texas? What power on earth could possibly cause you to start controlling your most base human instinct and desire? It is the power of Iman. And what Iman does in this month, we demonstrate to Allah and we demonstrate to ourselves that Iman is more precious to us than what our nafs desires. Qatada, the famous student of Ibn Abbas said, if a person does everything his soul desires, if a person follows every hawa without letting his taqwa stop him, then he has taken his desires as his God besides Allah. Qatada is referencing a verse in the Quran. It's a very powerful verse. Allah says, Afara'ayta man ittakhada ilahahu hawahu. Have you seen the one who has worshipped his own self instead of Allah? Who worships his self instead of Allah? Qatada said, the one who caves into every desire, the one who does everything the soul and body wants, it is as if that person has worshipped himself instead of Allah. And so once again, what does the fasting do? The fasting demonstrates we have, in English is called willpower. Willpower. We have willpower. And we are dignified. We're not beasts. We're not animals. We don't just cave in to every single inclination, every instinct we have. And so we prove to ourselves our nobility through our humanity, through our servitude, through our conquering our desires for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why fasting liberates us. Fasting is liberating because it allows us to taste nobility. We feel, frankly, a sense of being angelic angels because we are literally overcoming the most base human instinct of eating and drinking. And we are literally overcoming what our bodies not just desire but need. And we're demonstrating to Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more precious to us even than our own physical selves and our bodies. And this is the height of taqwa. One of the uh, hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in a, uh, reported in Sunan ibn Majah, three things are destructive to a person. Thalath muhlikat. Three things are destructive. And one of them, one of them, hawan muttaba'a. When a man follows his desires. Three things will destroy you. One of them, if you allow every desire. And by the way, even outside of Ramadan, this is a very important topic. O oh, Muslim, Keep your ego and desires in check. Don't just do everything your soul wants. Don't just follow every inclination because that is destructive to yourself. It is destructive to your spirituality. It is destructive to your ubudiyah and servitude to Allah. 
And especially in the month of Ramadan, we show ourselves we can overcome our desires. A man came to Hassan al-Basri, the famous you know, scholar of the past, the ascetic scholar, and said to him, which jihad is the best? And at the time, there were many jihads going on. He wanted to know which battle should I join? Which jihad is the best? Hassan al-Basri said, the strongest jihad is the jihad against your own desires. The most powerful jihad is the jihad that you conquer yourself. And what Siyam does, it demonstrates for us that we are able to conquer our own desires. So, of the ways that the Siyam and fasting helps us to achieve taqwa, is that it trains us to keep our urges, our animal instincts, and our desires in check. When we can even control halal desires, when we can control halal urges, then by Allah, brothers and sisters, can't me and you control the haram ones? If we can control food and drink, then by Allah, we can control that which is haram. So this is of the ways that fasting achieves taqwa. Another mechanism that fasting helps us attain taqwa, and it is actually an umbrella number of points, not just one point. The month of Siyam reintroduces us to so many different rituals that unfortunately many of us neglect, maybe even abandon outside of the month. Ramadan reintroduces us to salah. How many of us, we are lazy in our salah, and in the month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah, we start praying five times a day. How many of us, we don't take care of our sunan, and our rawatib, and our nafil, and in the month of Ramadan, we raise the bar, and we try our best to do sunan. How many of us, we rarely come to the masjid, and alhamdulillah, in the month of Ramadan, across the Muslim world, every single masjid is packed to capacity. Alhamdulillah, the ummah is alive. Alhamdulillah, the Iman is strong in the Ummah, especially in this month of Ramadan. How many of us, we hardly take the Quran off of our shelf and open it up. But in this month, the dust is pulled off. In this month, the covers are taken out. In this month, the book is open and tilawa of the Quran is done. How many of us are so irregular when it comes to charity. We hardly give charity, but in this month, we start thinking, who should I give to? Which family member is in need? Which charity should I sponsor? Which orphanage should I give some money to? Alhamdulillah, this month, it rekindles all of the rituals that we should be doing throughout the year. But in this month, alhamdulillah, we are reintroduced to them. We thank Allah that the houses of Allah are packed. We thank Allah the Quran is from every single mimbar and mihrab. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the rituals are being demonstrated in this month in a manner that throughout the year they are not being demonstrated. And so what happens in this month is that the rituals of Islam are rediscovered and that is of the essence of taqwa. One other thing we will mention as well about the reality of taqwa and how siyam causes us to achieve taqwa. And perhaps, perhaps this is the overarching mechanism. Perhaps this is the queen of how and why fasting reintroduces us to taqwa. Because we all need an incentive to do what we do. We all need an incentive. We need the carrot in front of us. Why do you go to work? Because you're going to get your paycheck. Why do you do anything that you do? There is some incentive in there. What is the incentive for worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There's plenty of incentives, but one of the most powerful incentives about why we worship Allah is the feeling of peace and serenity that the true believer tastes when he or she submits to Allah. In Arabic, it is called halawat al-iman. In Arabic, it is called the sweetness of iman. Now, you know when you taste a real sweet, you don't want to eat something that's salty afterwards. Your mouth is feeling nice with that sweet. When you eat something very precious to you, you feel so good about this, you don't want to ruin that taste in your mouth. Well, what if you taste the ultimate sweetness of life, which is the sweetness of worshiping Allah? What if you can taste what it feels like to achieve spiritual tranquility? You achieve tama'neenat al-nafs. You achieve sakinat al-qalb. You achieve tranquility of the heart. What if life 
feels blessed and noble to live? What if the anxieties and the stress that you face are cast aside and you feel a sense of spiritual happiness because you have rediscovered what it means to be a believer? This is what Ramadan primarily does. What Ramadan does, the nobility of serving Allah, the exaltedness of being a worshiper of Allah, the sweetness of what it means to humble yourself in front of Allah, we are reintroduced to that sweetness. And because we taste the sweetness of Iman, because we know what it feels like and how beautiful a feeling it is. Wallahi, our bodies are tired, our sleep is deprived, the throat is dry, the voice is cracking. But inside right now, how you feel, you wish you could feel it throughout the year. You and I, we both know, we feel ennobled. We feel blessed. We feel we're doing something. That feeling of nobility, that feeling of tranquility, that feeling of sakina of the heart, that is the essence of taqwa. This is what taqwa is. You want to worship Allah because you rediscovered the nobility of worshiping Allah, the sweetness of worshiping Allah. And in Ramadan, every single one of us, without exception, we taste a little bit of that sweetness. We taste the reality of, you know, life is good, living a sinless life, living a purpose-filled, worship-filled, ibadah-filled life. It actually feels good to be a believer, a mu'min, a Muslim. And guess what? That feeling of sweetness is not just in Ramadan. It's not just in Ramadan. You can feel it throughout the year. Every single day of your life, you can feel it. So what Ramadan does, is that it reminds you of the nobility of Islam. It reminds you, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I only created you, O men and jinn, so that you may worship me. I don't want any rizq from you. I'm the one that's going to give you the rizq, Allah says in the Quran. And so the height of taqwa, O oh brothers and sisters, the height of taqwa is that your soul feels a full sense of being alive. And that is exactly what Allah says in the Quran, that he who worships Allah, the soul becomes alive. The one who turns to Allah, the soul becomes rekindled. Allah says, give the example of the one who was dead and we brought him back to life. Ibn Abbas comments, Allah is not talking about somebody in the graveyard whom Allah called back to live in society. Allah is talking about somebody who was spiritually dead. And then he discovered or rediscovered Islam. And in rediscovering Islam, his soul became alive again. This is what Allah is saying in the Quran. Give the example of the one who was dead and we brought him back to life. The one who does not worship Allah is spiritually dead. And the one who worships Allah is spiritually alive. So what Ramadan does, oh brothers and sisters, what Ramadan does, it makes us alive again. It brings life back to our soul and our heart. And we feel a sense of revival, a sense of enthusiasm that reintroduces us to the beauty and the sweetness of worshiping Allah. And if this were the only benefit of Ramadan, it would be enough. And oh brothers and sisters, we all know, we all know when Ramadan finishes and you know the rest of the month and the year begins, yes, one side of us is happy, we go back to eating and drinking in the day, but one side of us we miss the spirituality, the buzz, the hype of Ramadan. One side of us, we feel that emptiness in our hearts. That emptiness, we don't need to feel it. We can maintain and sustain that relationship with Allah. And that is one of the main purposes of this month of Ramadan. To rejuvenate, to revive, to bring the soul back to life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with and through the Quran. And may he make us of those who, his verses they understand and apply the halal and haram throughout our lifespan. Ask Allah's forgiveness. You as well ask him for his the ghafoor and the rahman. Alhamdulillah, all praises due to Allah, the one and the unique. 
He it is whom we worship, and it is his aid that we seek. He is the Lord of the oppressed, and he hears the prayer of the weak. As to what follows, here we are, dear brothers and sisters. Pretty much half the month is gone. And I was standing here on this platform barely a few days ago before Ramadan came. And I said, before you know it, the month will finish. And here we are. This is the second of our four khutbas in the month of Ramadan. And another two weeks, and that's it. Ramadan is gone. And statistically speaking, O oh Muslims, statistically speaking, there are people here today who will not be here next Ramadan. I don't know who they are. Might be me, might be any one of you. We have to be realistic in this regard. Statistically, there are people here. They will be now entering the very last Ramadan of their lives. So with that attitude in mind, we should not be morbid. We should be enthused. We should make the best of these most precious days. We should do the utmost we can. There is no time frame in the year that is more blessed than this time frame that we're about to face. These 10 nights especially, these last 10 nights are the most blessed nights of the year. وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ These are the 10 nights. And our Prophet ﷺ would never spend the entire night awake throughout the year. He would never spend the whole night in prayer except in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Throughout the year, it was between sleep and tahajjud. But the last 10 nights, he would spend the entire night awake. And our mother Aisha radiallahu anha said, when the last 10 began, he would tighten his belt. It's an Arabic expression. In English, we say, roll up the sleeves. He would tighten his belt. He would get ready for that battle, that internal battle. He would tighten his belt and he would spend the whole night awake. And he would awaken all of us as well to pray tahajjud the whole night. Not only would he do the whole night, he would make sure all of his family members are doing that as well. And if we could only understand and imagine, one night in these ten is equivalent to multiple lifetimes of worship. One night in these ten. And we are guaranteed if we spend every one of these, we are guaranteed to get it. Then wallahi, how stingy can somebody be? to be given a fortune beyond measure and to be guaranteed that fortune and still not be desirous, not be eager to get that fortune. And I understand, brothers and sisters, in the world we live in, it's not possible for many of us to spend the whole night awake. So the goal is not you are competing with the process and we cannot compete with him. The goal is you're competing with yourself. So what I ask myself and all of you is a very simple ask. These 10 nights that are coming up, Make sure you are doing more in them than you have done throughout the rest of the year. That's a simple goal. You are your own competition. You must beat yourself. That's it. In these last 10 nights, especially the odd ones, sacrifice as much as you humanly can for your sleep. Sacrifice for this world. Sacrifice the dunya for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yes, we have to go to work the next day. So we need two, three, four hours. Come back home, sleep, and then prepare for the evening. And throughout the night, ibadah and dhikr and dua. Do not underestimate the power of dua. Raise your hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the holiest of holy nights. No dua is more powerful throughout the year than the dua of Laylatul Qadr. That's why it's called Laylatul Qadr, the night of power power because everything you do becomes more powerful your dhikr becomes more powerful your salah becomes more powerful and your dua becomes more powerful so raise your hands to allah in these last 10 days open your heart to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beg allah to reintroduce you to the sweetness of iman beg allah to make your life more righteous and pious we are all struggling brothers and sisters nobody is a saint amongst us unless somebody is hidden we are all sinners together we are all all struggling with the problems of this world but you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not interested in the quantity of deeds he's interested in the quality of your heart so turn to Allah sincerely turn to Allah with a heart full of remorse and penitence 
turn to Allah wanting purification. And if you turn to Allah wanting to be purified, that mere desire and ikhlas is what will bring about Allah's blessings in your life. Be sincere and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you what you want. Oh brothers, this might well be the last Ramadan for some of us. If it is the case, then let this Ramadan and let these 10 days be the very best 10 days of our lives. For those who are not here the next year, if they make these 10 nights the best night, then inshallah ta'ala, they have met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the highest level they've ever been. And that is the ultimate goal of Ramadan, to achieve taqwa. And if we're able to achieve taqwa, especially in these 10 nights, then indeed we have been successful. Allahumma inni da'in fa'aminu. Allahumma la tada'in fi had yawmi dhamban illa ghafarta. Wala hamman illa farrajta. Wala daynan illa qadayta. Wala maridan illa shafayta. Wala asiran illa yassarta. Allahumma aghfir lana wa li ikhwanina ladhina sabakuna bil iman. Wala taj'a fi qulubina ghillan lilladhina amanu. Rabbana innaka raufur rahim. Allahumma a'izz al-islam wa al-muslimin. Allahumma a'izz al-islam wa al-muslimin. Allahumma a'izz al-islam wa al-muslimin. Allahumma man aradana aw arad al-islam wa al-muslimin bi su'in fajghilhu bi nafsi wa ja'al tadmirahu fi tadbirihi ya qawiyu ya aziz. Allahumma ansur ikhwanana fi ghazza. Allahumma ansur ikhwanana fi ghazza. Allahumma ansurhum ya qawiyu ya aziz. Allahumma dammir a'da'ahum ya jabbaru ya mutakabbir. Ibadallah inna Allah ta'ala amarakum bi amna bada bihi bi nafsi wa thanna bi malaika di qudusi wa thalatha bikum ayyuhal mu'minuna min jinnihi wa insi faqal azza min qa'ilin alima inna Allah malaika di yusalloon ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa an'im ala abdika rasulika muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in ibadallah inna Allah ta'ala ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'id al qurba wa yanha'an al fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idukum la'allakum tadakkaroon اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزد لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا Stow, straighten your rose, leave no gaps in the line. <clears throat> Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqim Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-maghdub alayhim Waladhalin Ameen Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu Kutib alaykum al-siyamu Kama kutib ala al-lazina min قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين فمن تطوع فهو خير له 
وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى ما طلع الفجر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون 